Welcome everyone, I'm Jonas working for Eclipse Source and today I would like to show you what every developer should know about EMF. Um, actually I'm su surprised that so many people are here because this is a sponsor talk <laughs> and typically in um, sponsor talks there are only like three guys sitting around and a marketing person from a company is presenting a lot of fancy slides to sell some products. Um, my idea of this talk is to not do this. I will try to do the exact opposite. I will show you only one slide and then I will directly dive into a demonstration. I will, show, I will switch to the IDE and show you what I consider like the most important uh, features and most impor important things that you should know about EMF. Um, so the remaining talk will basically just be a demonstration in my IDE. <coughs> the other thing that I would like to do, um, if you have any question at any point during my demonstration, feel free to ask in between. So I have an agenda for the, for the talk, but if you're interested in some additional stuff, just, just interrupt me. Um, question to you, who of you has used EMF before? Okay, that's half of the group who knows what it is. The same half <laughs> who doesn't know what it is. Okay. So <coughs> let's answer this question first. So, what is EMF, the Eclipse modeling framework? Um, the basic idea is um, to provide a framework to generate code um, based on a model. Um, this model is described in a simple language called ECOR. And what we generate from there are entities, Java entities. <coughs> and um, those entities have, have a very common API, typically with getters and setters. And those entities are supposed to store the data of my application. May that be a tool or a business application. Now, <coughs> a typical thing when it comes to modeling is that um, people are not using modeling somehow claim this is kind of overcomplicated, it's very complex, and it doesn't work in practice. And I think <coughs> this basically comes from this, um, in, the, in the early 2000s years, um, there were some people claiming in 10 years we do not program anymore. We will model the whole application, and then we will just press a button and everything is generated. While this works in some domains, where you can somehow strip down the, the expressiveness to something that you can really model completely. It obviously didn't work for general purpose application because, I mean, still we code a lot and that's, that's the task of a developer. Um, and I think one problem of many modeling tools is that they do not focus. That means they promise you kind of the same expressiveness, expressiveness as in the underlying programming language and thereby they are overly complicated. <coughs> EMF is very pragmatic and one of the main reasons for that is it really focuses on one aspect of your application and that's the entities, meaning the classes which hold the data for you. And by focusing on, on this aspect only, <coughs> it can provide you a very pragmatic language and a very pragmatic approach which really immediately provides some, some benefits to you and immediately improves your efficiency which we will see in a second, hopefully. Okay, that, that was the slide. <laughs> so now I, I dive into a demonstration. I'm sorry, I have to sit down for that. I hope you can still see and understand me. Okay, so that's my IDE. <coughs> what I prepared for this demonstration is I instantiated an example model. Um, this example model you can instantiate in any Eclipse modeling edition. Um, it's called Make It Happen. It contains some example entities, but I will add some new to show you how modeling um, in general looks like in EMF. Okay, um, so let's look at this. This is a standard um, Eclipse bundle. There's no technical difference to, to a regular bundle, so it contains code in the source folder. Um, <coughs> the main difference is that this code has not been written by hand. It was generated and it was generated from an artifact which describes how the entities um, should look like. This artifact is here in another folder called model and there I have this file called .ecore. In my case it's called task.ecore because task is the name of my model. So let's open this. <coughs> what I see now is the standard um, 
editor to, to modify eCourse. Um, this standard editor is tree-based and property-based. That means I see a tree of all my elements in my model. And if I double-click one of them, I see the properties of, of it. And thereby, I can modify elements. Now, the main important elements of such an eCore model are classes. <coughs> I have three of them. So those are, in, in eCore, we call them e-classes. Um, if I generate the Java code, those will translate to Java classes. So let's look at an example. <coughs> I have a e-class called user. And as a consequence, in my generated code, I also have a class and interface called user. So this is what, what this generates to. And the second important element um, in, in EMF is what we call a feature, a feature of a class. Um, those are the elements which are contained here. Um, features can be either attributes or references. So if you translate that to Java, an attribute is a field with a getter and a setter method, which is generated from that. So for example, <coughs> sorry, we have here an attribute first name, which is of type string. And now if we look at the API of user, we have a get and set uh, method for the same attribute. So this is the basic scheme. OK, so now let's modify this a bit. Um, let me close that. So if I now want to define a new attribute for my entity user, I can just right click here on the, on the E class and add a new attribute. <coughs> Then I can double click that and enter the properties of this. Um, for an attribute, I typically have to specify, or I have to specify three things. Um, one is the name, so let's call this foobar. I have to specify the type. Um, could be an integer, could be a string, or whatever you want to model. So let's make it a string. Um, and finally, I need to specify the multiplicity. Um, default is just there's one string, but I could also uh, define that there, there's a list of strings. And I, can, I could specify the lower and upper bound of this particular attribute. <coughs> so let's do a more complex example um, to, to show you how you would create a new class in this language. Um, so let's assume uh, I want to define a new class. And this, this new class is an address. And this address can be assigned to user. So I can actually express in my application, or I can capture in my application the address information of a, of, of a user. So to do that, again, I right click the containing element. In this case, this would be the root element because I'm really creating a new E class. I give that E class a new uh, a name, in my case, address. And then I can model the attributes of this. So for example, for address, probably we want to have the street, which is of type string. Or we want to have, uh, let's say, the country, which is also of type string. <coughs> so now I modeled my new class, and now I somehow have to connect that to the user. For that, I will add a reference from user to address. So this time, I create a reference. Instead, I call that reference address, like this. <coughs> now, as an E-type, this time I specify the type I'm referencing. So that would be address, like, oh, sorry. Like this. Um, and finally, for a reference, um, there are two options how I can model that in EMF. Um, at the moment, I just modeled a what we call a cross-reference that basically means in Java, um, this translates to a field where the reference to this other element would be stored. Um, EMF adds this concept um, of containment. 
containment basically means it's uh, so in Java it's the same thing so we will have a field which stores the reference to the other element um, but it adds a semantic to this to this reference that the address is contained in the user and as a consequence to that for example if I would delete the user it would also delete the address because semantically the address is really contained inside of the user um, which makes sense for this <coughs> and that's why I will set this containment to true and then I will have such a containment reference okay so this is how <coughs> how you describe your entities in in ecor um, it's worth mentioning that there are several other ways that you can actually do this so this is the default way and it's available in every Eclipse modeling installation but if you for example prefer um, to do that in a diagram where you can actually see the classes and you can draw references and so um, you can do that so there is a diagram support provided by a project called eCore tools um, and I've prepared that let me open that oh no so let me just create a new diagram um, so there is a option to create an eCore diagram based on the, the model that I already have <coughs> I would assign it a different name you can select the type but the standard is a class diagram um, I can give it a title and then I just click on finish and double click here and now I have a diagram representing the exact same classes that I just modeled in this tree structure. So this should be familiar if, you, if you're familiar with um, UML. <coughs> so you have classes and reference in between them. And over here, for example, we see the new element. And I can also modify it here. I can drag things around. And I could even add new attributes here. So if I would click uh, where here, I could add a new attribute. <coughs> it pretty much depends on what you're currently modeling. Um, personally, if I describe a lot of attributes um, of my entities, I prefer to use the tree-based one. If I model references or if I want to understand a model, I prefer the graphical representation. Um, besides the graphical representation, there's also a text-based representation called Xcore, um, which is exactly the same expressiveness. So instead of right-clicking and saying um, add class, there you can write something like new class and uh, but at the end um, the result will be an equal file again and finally <coughs> if you have an existing definition of your data for example in your database or in another format something like UML or in an XSD schema for example um, there are several importers where you can import existing data definitions to ecore and then generate code from that the good thing is <coughs> Sorry, my voice is really, after this long week, <laughs> not as good anymore. Um, the good news is that those formats describing data, meaning UML class diagram, XSD, JSON schema, and eCore, it's very easy to transform between those be because they almost have the same expressiveness. So if you have any existing format, it's worth the effort of investigating whether you can just transform that to eCore. Okay, so... Um, that's how you model stuff in, e uh, in, in EMF. Now, once you, you're happy with your model, meaning happy with the entities that you described, <coughs> you can generate code from that. And that's pretty simple. Just press one button, and EMF will do the job for you. Now, <coughs> there is, um, or people who, who not use modeling and never used EMF before, they often say, I don't want to use EMF because it generates so much code and I, it's not maintainable and uh, I don't know what this code does. Um, <coughs> I would claim that's not correct. I mean, you can look at the code and it's very understandable. So let's see an example of the code that um, EMF has generated for us. So let's close this. <coughs> and let's look at the source folder. Um, so for every entity, EMF will generate two things. Um, first, it will create an interface. Um, that's what we have here. This interface, of, uh, of course, contains all the attributes that we just described. So let's open this, and let's have a look at this. So it has an um, 
it defines a method get street, set street, get country, and set country. So <coughs> I would claim there's nothing magic in this interface. So let's look at the implementation of this. And let's look at the get street method. <coughs> Again, this just returns a field. Um, so this is a field of type string and it's just returned. So again, there's no magic here. Um, let's look at the set street method because that's a little bit more interesting. So in the set street method, it gets the new value. <coughs> then it stores this, the old value, meaning the uh, um, previous value in, in the field into a variable. It sets the field to the new value and then down here, it actually fires a notification. And this is due to the fact that EMF supports change notification out of the box. So if you ever use Java Beans, you typically have to manually implement that. In EMF, it's just there. So you can register to any instance, to any EMF instance, and you can listen to changes and react to that. For example, in the UI or in, in any other code you would like to. And that's exactly the code with, uh, which, yep. Um, you can, um, however, I would, <coughs> so talking about dependencies, this really adds only a dependency to the EMF runtime. And if you use EMF, the EMF runtime becomes a little bit like Java for you. It's, it's just there. So it's the base of your application. I mean, but you can um, turn this off. Actually, you can even generate plain Java code. You could just generate Java beans. And by the way, the code generator is actually also modifiable. So if you, if you want to strip it down to really have only plain Java beans, you could, you could do that as well. However, <coughs> I, I, I observed some projects who initially wanted to get rid of all the EMF dependencies, but then they kind of re-implemented what EMF provides because the, the feature set is really small and I would claim it's really what you typically need in your entity model anyway. No. Okay, so what this does is it checks whether a notification is required. That basically is a check whether there is an, a, a listener listening to this. <coughs> and then it calls in notify which sends out a notification. And the values which are in here are the object which has been changed, so this. Um, the type of change, it was a set. Um, an identifier for the attribute which has been changed, the old value and the new value. And I would claim if you write this by hand, um, this is exactly the same parameters that you would come up. Okay. <coughs> um, next thing uh, that I would like to do is I would like to show you the API of those entity objects. So once you generated the code, you somehow interact with, with your objects. Um, and um, yeah, EMF, or the EMF objects provide a pretty um, efficient API for that. So let's look at that. Um, to use the API of my objects, I will create a JUnit test case, not because I want to test something, just because I want to have a place to write some code. So it's a very trivial way to, to write some example code. And I will create this test case right in this model bundle, which is, of course, in, in real world would not be a good idea. Okay, so now I have a test case that I can run <coughs> and let's play around with my entities. Um, the first and probably most unusual thing that you have to um, get used to is that EMF objects, by the way, they are called E objects, stands for EMF objects. Um, they always have a private constructor. That means you cannot directly instantiate them using the constructor, but you always use a factory for that. Um, the reason for that is that this is the only way of, <coughs> or of hiding the implementation classes because you want a user of those entities only to depend on the interface. And um, if you want to achieve that, you must make your uh, constructors private. That's the main reason of using those factories. The, the advantage of that is that kind of forces all users of your entities to only deal with the interfaces and never depend on the concrete implementation so you can exchange them transparently. Okay, so for every, <coughs> for every package in EMF, there is a factory. My package is named task and that's why my 
um, factory is called task factory. It has an, an instance variable and here EMF generates a create method for every type. So for example, I have create address and now I can assign that to a variable and now I create an address. Um, now the API of this address object, um, call, uh, let's look at the set one. This is plain Java. This, is, this, this doesn't defer anyhow to, to what you use to Java. So for example, I can set the country like this or I can set the street. Like this, so there, there's no difference. And um, there's one, <coughs> again, there's one special thing about this API, and that's um, how EMF deals with references. Um, if, you if you have a multi-reference, and let me show you an example for that, by creating uh, a user group. User group is a group of users, and it defines that several users can be contained in it. And let me create a user. Now, if I want to put the user in the user group, meaning create a reference from user group to user, and the API looks like this. I call user group, <coughs> get users. This returns a list. And then I call add and put the user inside. So that's how, how you create references in EMF. Now, this is all really basic, and that doesn't really defer to using any Java entity. Um, another thing that I observe in many projects is that people try to hide this API from their business code because they don't want to depend on EMF. In fact, this is plain Java, so um, there's nothing to hide. It's, it's just a Java interface, and there's nothing that you will probably replace. Um, this is not the full truth. <coughs> EMF adds something to your objects, um, but those, th those additional methods are actually very useful. And um, the most important feature that EMF adds is um, a reflective API, um, the same as in Java. But the good thing is that this reflective API can be, can be used much more efficiently than in Java. So let's do an example for that. Um, <coughs> Sorry. So I have my address object. Now every object in EMF has a parameter which is called E class. This is the equivalent of calling get class in Java. So this actually accesses the um, meta information of this object, meaning the definition which attribute um, and which reference this object has. Um, and now, for example, from this definition, I can get a list of all attributes. <coughs> so now this is a list of all attributes. Um, in, if I would execute this, there are exactly two elements in, one element for the street and one element for the country. And now what I can do with that is, for example, I could print, in, print it out, but um, I can also use those attributes to reflectively modify my objects. So for example, what I could do is for each attribute of my class, I call e address, e unset, <coughs> and I pass the attribute as a parameter. <coughs> this will actually set the value back to the default value. Now what this looks completely stupid in my example because I know that I have an address and I know that there are only those two attributes. Um, this piece of code, meaning those four lines, will work for every object in your application. And even if you modify that, it will still work. And that's what EMF or what, what, what makes EMF so powerful. Um, using this reflective access, you can implement features in a way that they don't depend on a concrete class but they are just available for all classes. And you don't have to touch or change them in, in case you add a new class or you add a, a, a new model to your application. Now, <coughs> based on this 
reflective API. Um, there are quite a few uh, um, frameworks which use this API to provide you with, um, with features. Um, let's do a small example of that. Um, eCore itself provides a class called eCoreUtil. And this, for example, provides a method called copy, which <coughs> creates a copy of every E object. What it basically does inside is it looks at the object that, that it gets in, it looks which attributes are there, and then it iterates over all those attributes. And for every attribute, it will put the value from the um, existing object into the new object. Very trivial, and because of the reflective API, it's just there, and you can use that. Okay, so let's leave the code, <coughs> and let's do something differently. Um, besides the code that I've just shown you, and besides this uh, reflective API, EMF generates a second bundle. I mean, you can influence that, by, but most people use that, and that's called the edit bundle. Um, this bundle uh, contains some adapter classes um, which allow you to very efficiently show your entities in a UI. Um, to go into detail, the most important thing contained in this bundle are content provider and label provider um, for all your entities. That means if you want to show your uh, entities in a tree, in a table, or in a list, um, you don't have to implement content and label providers yourself. You can just use the generated one. Um, they're they're uh, ready to be used. They provide ch um, uh, updating the UI based on changes. So you, <coughs> you will save a lot of work in programming your UI. So let me demonstrate that. Um, to demonstrate those UI classes, I actually need a UI. So I would need a tree. And what I would show is EMF even goes one step further. It doesn't only provide you um, label provider and content provider, it even allows you to uh, generate a full editor, which is actually ready to be used based on your model. So let me show you that. So here I can select to generate the editor now. <coughs> and then let me start another Eclipse instance. I'm sorry I didn't delete my tryouts. So let's delete them. Okay, so now <coughs> what this editor bundle provides me is a visitor to create a new model, or to be precise, a model instance. So now I can create instances of my task model. I click on next, just select a file name. <coughs> and let me close this and open this. This is the editor I was just mentioning. So <coughs> this works out of the box for every model. The reason is that um, EMF, as just mentioned, generates item providers for me, meaning label providers and content providers. Um, so we have this tree, and this tree is already fully functional. So I can create users in a user group, and I can uh, create an address in my user. I can even use features like drag and drop, so I can move this over here and so on and so forth. And this is, and I can even modify stuff like this, and you see everything is, is updating on the left side. Now, <coughs> the reason why this works, again, is for the left side, this editor just uses the generated label provider and content provider. The right side is actually rendered by EMF Forms, which is another framework which uses the reflective API of, uh, um, of EMF, and basically it just looks at the entity which is currently selected um, to retrieve all the attributes and references. And then it can just, for every attribute and reference, choose a default control and show that on screen. So that basically means if you want to get started with EMF and you want to provide an editor or let's say a form-based UI, 
you don't have to code something initially, you can just derive that from the model. And obviously the great advantage of that is if you change your model, if you extend your model, you can just restart the application and this editor would just pick up whatever, whatever um, classes are there in your, uh, in your application. Okay, <coughs> so, let me check, okay. Um, comment about the right side of the editor. Um, if you just want to have a form, meaning if you just need fields to enter data, you can also get this without the tree, obviously. And it's also possible to influence the layout and uh, how exactly those forms look like. If you're interested in that, EMF forms is the framework you're looking for. Now, another thing <coughs> that I was implicitly using in my rami running application is um, EMF provides a default serialization for your entities. Um, I can see that if I open this file in a text editor. Um, so without me coding something, EMF already s stores all the data in, in an XMI format. Again, <coughs> the serializer is obviously written with, this with those reflective feature. If you imagine to write your own serializer based on EMF, what you basically do is you iterate over this reflective API and then you serialize all the attributes and references. So if you're not happy with this format and you need an own serialize an own way to, um, to somehow serialize your EMF object that's very efficient to be done in EMF. <coughs> Besides this, 